Well, good morning, afternoon, depending on your time zone, everyone. Welcome to today's Helm developer call on Thursday, October the 10th. Um, thank you all for joining. And a reminder that the call is under the CNC CNCF code of conduct. Uh, so please be polite and follow uh, the conduct, <laughs> code of conduct, rather. Um, and voice today. Uh, right, to, to get us started, let's see if we have any announcements. Awesome. Uh, do you want to take this from Matt? Yep. So I've got two announcements here. First of all, Evans, your vote went through for triage maintainer. Congratulations. Um, I will contact you about what we do to get all of that stuff set up here. I'll do that in the background, but uh, congratulations. The vote has passed. Yeah. Thank you, Evans, for the help. Congrats. And then the second one is Josh um, has been a Helm Helm maintainer and org maintainer for a while, um, but he has stepped down from those roles. He is staying on for Chart Museum, which he created, but he is stepping down from those other two roles. And in fact, the pull requests have come through. He's announced it. And now we've just got the logistical cleanup stuff. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. I don't think I ever met Josh, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of good work from him. Yeah. He's the one who drove bringing the OCI uh, chart storage into Helm. Oh, nice. Um, my two announcements. Cool. Thank you, Matt. Um, Karen, uh, KubeCon booths. Thanks everyone who has signed up thus far. We have one more slide um, for our booth at KubeCon. It is Thursday during one of our talks. Um, so currently Robert is signed up. If we can find someone else to help them, that would be great. Otherwise I'm hoping that people would just be at the session, uh, which would be even better. And so hopefully the traffic won't be too bad. Um, but if anyone has any cycles to spare, yeah, we have one more slot and we'd love to have you. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that one is slightly awkward because it is during the uh the country fest. Yep. Um but I guess someone should be at the booth, so yeah, awkward. Oh uh <laughs> scheduling is hard. Um so uh Emory pre delete hook one three oh pull request one three zero nine eight. Is Emory on the call? Uh I think he's not on the call. Um we did discuss this, was it last week or the week before? I can't remember. Was there a follow-up that anybody, um, the notes say there was a suggested solution between Matt and Andy? Well, I don't have a suggested solution. I do have things that need to change. That was in June. All right, yeah, I need to, and I may have failed to do this. I need to go back and comment on it um, because as of right now, this solution doesn't work because of um, just the way some of the saving and things happen. This causes problems when you get down into some of the nested because it assumes that uh, when you save and it forgets that uh, hooks running and some other stuff actually saves along the way as well. So this does not have quite the intended consequence, but you've got to look like three levels down in called functions in order to understand it. So uh, I can go give some feedback on it because I do have that one open. Okay. Yeah, actually, I never, yeah, this uh, I, I, I got confused with a different one, but yeah, yeah. I, I also started looking at the logic here and my, my immediate thought is uh, previously it went so I marked the the chart as uninstalling there and then runs the hooks, if I understood correctly. And now it's trying to run the hooks and then mark the chart as uninstalling. And it seems like Helm would need a state of pre-uninstalling well, to represent this correctly. 
Yeah, and and yeah, so this gets into to something funny there because inside exec hook, you actually start um, saving to it. So if your deleted time, right, where it says to helm time now and your deleted description, well, if it doesn't know it's deleting and then it starts executing hooks under pre-delete and saving that, you end up in a weird information state on the record because exact hook does save information. So that's where yeah, I, you got it yeah. buried down yeah, in there. I, so I can make some comments on it and um, point out where things need to be handled and I can do that today. Okay, awesome. Okay. And, I, and I think the other one you were thinking about, um, I commented on just before this meeting, giving direction. Okay. And then I put some code paths in there for anybody who wanted to know what was going on. Right, so I just pull out the notes again. Uh, so we've got, so yeah, discussion, Matt. <laughs> Uh, let's talk Helm V4 plan. Uh, yeah. Do that. Yeah, please. There's I'm a not... document link there. And in fact, I'll share it here. In the... Already shared. Sure. Thank I, you. I'll, I'll, I'll share the, the screen so we can talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. And so Andrew and I have to put together the talk for um, KubeCon. And we, as a group, need to be able to have talking points when we're in the booth and all of that. So I started to put this together to kind of structure thinking. I like putting things into writing to think things through. Um, and then we can base the talk on it. We can have talking points, all of this stuff to kind of know what's going on here. So I started this. Um, we can make changes to this and whatever, but I, I needed to have a starting point. So I started by, if you actually scroll up a little, I can walk through it a little bit just so everybody knows, because I want feedback on it. And um, I put together the plan and I put together the reason for it. And I explain things like semantic versioning and our backwards compatibility policy, which is why we don't break things. Um, I do think it's useful for everybody to know it and where to find those. Um, and we do need to make some changes now because it's been a while. And in slides, I can do a few slides that kind of show the progression, progression but that's the reason for it. Then there were the prerequisites, like what do we need to do in order to execute on Helm version four. And I came up with a few of those. One, we needed active maintainers. We'll take the time to review things. Um, and as you've seen, we've had maintainers. Uh, this is the third week in a row. We've either had a maintainer or a triage maintainer start. And some of the maintainers who just haven't been active have now come off in approximately the same time. And so for Helm, we actually have a bunch of fresh blood maintainers now who are able to uh, work on some of this, which I think is fantastic because this is what we need. Then we need direction on what is in and out of scope. I started that here, but what I put here isn't solely it. And then we need a timeline for the development of V4, right? Um, and so I put th that's those three things are, are somewhat addressed here. The active maintainers we did, but what's in and out of scope, I've stubbed that out and we can add to it and change it. Um, and I put a proposed timeline together. And then I addressed home version three because people are going to wonder about that. So in Helm version three, I basically said, while Helm version four is under maintenance, it's still development. It's really only gonna get bug fixes and do Kubernetes version updates. Um, but, you know, critical bug fixes, because we're gonna invest in Helm version four, but we'll still have those releases. We'll bump dependencies for CVEs, we'll bump Kubernetes versions, stuff like that. And once Helm version four is released, um, We'll support Helm V3, what did I put in here? Eight months, that's two, uh, you know, Kubernetes bumps still approximately is what it does. And the idea is to just give it that amount of time. Um, and so it provides just kind of that overlap for people to migrate off. I'd originally thought six months, but I thought we can do eight months because we'll end up with those two versions. It's not gonna be too bad, but that gives people a good amount of time to then migrate from Helm V3 to Helm V4 when Helm V3 drops out of support. Um, and it'd be the same coverage as what we had during development. The timelines, my proposed timeline is we start Helm version four at the start of November. So that's actually just a few weeks away and we would open up the branch. I probably need to document the logistics of how we do that. Um, but we did the same thing for Helm version two. It's not too hard um, to open up branches and, and switch things around. But we started at the beginning of November right? And then we released Helm version four 
um, for KubeCon North America 2025. So that gives us approximately one year to do the development on it. It time boxes it. We can have a really nice release candidate phase leading up to it, but then we can, you know, go ahead and say, hey, here it is, celebrate. I, you know, I think KubeCon Europe um, is probably too short of a period of time to do it and then announce it there and be able to celebrate and everything at the conference. Um, and so I was looking at the next one out and that's what gave me that time, but we can have, you know, a month or two release candidates or alphas or beta, you know, those kinds of things that people poke at it, beat it up. So we make sure the 4.0 goes out very solid. And then Helm 4.1 would come out in January. Um, and then it would follow the same release cadence as Helm trailing Kubernetes. So you bring in those updates and then we would be back on track. That's my proposed timeline at Helm V3. Um, uh, will release, uh, what is it, July 2026 is that eight month of when it is now end of life. Um, what I put in out of scope was um, increasing the scope of the project beyond package management, right? I know there are people out there who want to get in Helm to do configuration management. And there's tools like Argo, Flux, there's Helm file, there's others. They want Helm to move in that direction. And so I put that as an out of scope thing. Um, changing the packaging format in a breaking way. We're not gonna <clears throat> go change charts in a way that breaks everybody's charts. The project will be forked, will be hunted down and killed. We need to be able to carry people forward. We can't have our Python three moment here. Um, we need to be careful about that. And then I put a very specific one in here, providing the line in a template where an error occurred. I put this one in here because we always get requests for this. And this is inside Go's templating engine, which means we would have to fork it, maintain it, and find a way to add that. I'm putting that out of scope, and most I'm calling that out here. Normally, I wouldn't put a specific feature, but I keep getting asked about this one. So I want to put it out of scope. Um, then I put in what I propose for the start of the scope changes, and I started it off by pulling in Helm's user profiles, or, or kind of our personas. Here's the, and they're in prioritized order. And so I threw those in. I see. Rob has made some suggestions. Um, and then it just to blurb about it, it's not a startup, it's not pivoting, any of those things. And then onto the changes. And I just came up with a list of changes like reworking, um, logging, uh, the interface cleanup, uh, the function cleanup. We got a lot of that. Or as V2, although there's now a pull request that might be able to pull it into Helm V3. Uh, three way merge for CRDs, um, improve signing and verification. Um, changing out what's monocular, used to be monocular, which is now long since replaced by Artifact Hub. Um, and there's a whole lot more, but I just started a list of things that I immediately saw on the changes. And then I wanted to open that up for others to um, throw their stuff in as well. But uh, this was just the, the, the basis. I was just framing out, here's a bunch of changes. It's an incomplete list. But this is this kind of the structure that I had to start. So. You know, um, I expect feedback after this, or I hope for it. But does anybody have feedback in the moment on this? Um, <clears throat> my my immediate comment is, yeah, thanks, thanks for putting this together because this really, when when people talked about Helm four previously, it was very like unclear what the scope should be. <laughs> so this does really refine, and I I do agree with, uh, I would say ninety eight percent of the document. I've got a couple of nitpicks, but <laughs> um, they can come later. Uh, yeah, like like seeing the the scoping what what we can do for Helm four and time boxing and setting expectations is is probably the a, a very important thing to do before we try and release Helm four because otherwise it'll just be a big mess. So thank you. Yeah, and there's some more that I'll add to this. Hips, we should probably do hips for some of the big changes and be proper about the design so it's thought through. And the first one that led me to that was. Logging, do you use slog or vlog or is it s log? Whatever it is, s log or v. You know which. What way do we go in logging and why? We should probably be able to communicate that because whichever direction we go in on it, somebody's probably going to question us. It'd be great if we could point back to the reason for it, that kind of thing. Actually, this is maybe a good thing to to talk about right right now. Um, during the Helm three process, if I understand, there was like mini hips where someone could propose an idea it would go into the 
in, into the basically ADR for arch architecture decision record for Helm 3, but it wasn't like a full-fledged hip. Um, it might be worth describing how we plan to uh, to communicate changes or have changes proposed for Helm 4. Yeah, there's actually a hip for Helm 4, and I need to go reread mm -hmm. it, and it says to use hips for it. So we may want to go revisit that hip and uh, revise it, which is something we could probably do. Um, but mm -hmm. there is a hit for Helm version four. And we do yeah. need to revise it because there are certain things in there that need to be changed. Yep. I did. Yeah, um... But also my my question, like how aligned are those or or is this something because there's like, I think, three sources of information. Now you can look at the notes from the Contrib Fest. There were like, uh, there was a session on Helm four and then you have the hip and, and uh, this document. And I think it probably makes sense to um, to have some canonical place, I think I think it's I didn't see any really contradiction so far. But, no. but you know, like terms of timeline and everything, uh, it's of course yeah. very different. I've got this all open for discussion right now because it needs to be translated into another hip and approved mm -hmm. and go in. And so okay. I wanted to have the discussion now and do it in a very flexible place because once you put it into Git, it's not as the workflow is not as fast to make changes. And certain things would probably be pulled out of the hip, such as what's in scope, because that may change over the course of it, and we can keep a list outside of it. We don't have to have a hip to dictate the scope, but the other things would be good to have in a hip. And yeah, so, and probably even what's out of scope may be something we don't put in the hip, but we put in the logistics around doing it because we may you know, argue and debate what's out of scope, add to the list, remove from it over time. So that would overcome the hip. Now, what was at the last Contrib Fest um, was lots of discussion, but, and I looked at those notes when I started to put this together and I still have that open, but that should be taken into account um, in it. But some things that were talked about at the Contrib Fest, you just can't do. And like, you know, a the line number for a template was one of the things there that is commonly asked for. And most people just don't realize that's buried inside of, the Go standard library where that kind of thing happens at. And so we'd have to fork the Go standard library, carry that mm -hmm. along in, and know how to make those changes in it for that to happen or contribute them upstream. And that's not something that they've been interested in. Yeah, but there's also like, for example, the Q topic um, was mentioned there. And I've also seen like uh, there's PRs open introducing at least to the, to the schema validation um, and uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see, like, is this something where like drastic changes are expected or, or? Drastic changes can happen, but we can't break people's charts. We yeah. have to make sure we've got a nice backwards compatibility and forward compatibility is handled well. So if you introduce something like Q, you have to also specify, have a nice way to say, these mm -hmm. are the home versions it works with and not just require it. Because if we break people's charts, there's tens of thousands of charts out there. There's companies and open source CNCF projects that all rely on this stuff working. If we break charts, we basically break the ecosystem and we're an enabler mm -hmm. for an ecosystem. We can't break it. Um, and if we do, Helm will just be forked uh, and other tools will come along to replace it. I mean, because yeah. they're going to look down on us the way Python 3 did, except mm. people don't depend on us quite the way they depend on Python 3. So we have to be careful on how we do that. I'm also not opposed to Q. There's been talk of mm. in the past of doing something like WebAssembly as well. Um, and so yeah, all I was, these I was things make I think a, we're going to A more general comment. From the ConTripFest notes, it's probably worth working out how do these get turned into proposals if people are serious and so to, yeah, to, to hack on the, the, the lines for template errors, <laughs> uh, someone needs to write out like a practical way for this to to happen if, if it wants to get implemented, which doesn't mm. break invariants, which we might have, which are things like forking Go templates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and, the, and so uh, all well, this would go through hips. It, would, it should yeah. be hips to do it. One thing that wasn't clear to me when I read this, like there was, I think, uh, um, the mention of a migration pass that should be there, but from what what uh, I understood now is more or less uh, the um, we basically target a situation where you could have Helm for as a drop-in replacement and all your charts 
would keep on working. So you wouldn't have to run, you know, like a migration script uh, on your chart that would, I don't know, transform no. it to some. Your, your old charts still need to work. We cannot break charts. Um, mm -hmm. If we start breaking charts, we're going to be hunted down by corporations mm -hmm. and people looking to talk with us because we're essentially breaking the ecosystem, uh, right? Yeah. If Kubernetes came out with a minor version and said, all right, deployments mm -hmm. don't work anymore, um, people would have a big problem about that, right? So we have to be careful on how we handle the ecosystem because Helm is not a startup project. It is yeah. very heavily and widely used. And if we go out and break people, that will have consequences. Yeah, so but this is probably exactly in this crispy fashion, it's probably good to, to state it exactly like yeah. this because there was some ambiguity in there where I thought like, what is this? Yeah, what, what is the approach to, to what is it? Uh, a breaking update is it like you know do you provide migration tools or uh, like if a smooth it's... experience but they, you're right i mean it's essentially like there's so much applications that publish helm charts yeah. it would be a huge mess yes and and for helm two to three we did provide a migration tool helm two to three uh that migrated um the data storage but we also didn't break charts there Mm -hmm. Because those old charts, those charts that somebody created in Helm 2 should still work today. Um, and it, it's kind of a painful. Now, if we came up with a new version of charts, we could do something there to come up with a whole new version of charts that only worked with Helm 4. Uh, that's possible. And that would be fine. Uh, that's something that could even be, we should probably structure Helm 4 so that we allow for that to easily happen. When we did that work in Helm 3, to allow us to have some changes because in Helm 2, we had chart version one. And in Helm 3, we support chart version one and chart version two. A little confusing, yeah, minus one there. But mm -hmm. if we go and do a new version of Helm charts and let people do that, then we need a better way with internal architecture to handle that. And we should probably account for that in these changes because it's it's some ugly code there. Yeah, it's also a maintenance burden, essentially, if yeah. you have to carry around uh, a backpack of uh, outdated uh, or support outdated charts. I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> to, uh, on, on that, I'm going to say, I think Helm would have to support the current version of charts for mm -hmm. uh, a, a decade. <laughs> um, like, that's that's probably not going to go away. But can, can we introduce a new version to that point? Um, yes. Probably. Um, yeah. But yeah, just, just, Re reducing the maintenance burden so that this is palatable is, is definitely a good idea. And and what I would say is is things like Q and even predecessors to Q have come up in the past. Uh, in fact, Helm version two had an internal place where it was designed to be expanded to handle more things than Go templates. In fact, if you go back to the chart structure, there was another property in there for your engine type. And so it defaulted to Go TPL but it was designed to have other things. And nobody ever came along. People always came along with ideas. Let's introduce something else. We're like, okay, awesome. Mm. Who wants to contribute this in a nice way and help us maintain it? Nobody ever showed up. And so one of the things if we are gonna break out of GoTPL is we need people who are willing to do the work to actually show up and do it and not just ask the Helm team to, oh, go do that for me. You know, We actually need contributions there. Yeah. So I'm going to interject here on the time. So oh, Evans has yeah. one more uh, hip review, uh, which I don't, do you have anything particular to say here or just <laughs> can we get some eyes on it? Just a nod, it's, it's, um, um, yeah, it's been on. I've asked, uh, we've talked about it a few times, just that uh, hasn't had some eyes. Okay. I, I, I can't remember what I thought thought if there was anything outstanding on this the uh, yeah the review uh, the the heap itself is about printing um obtaining output from hook jobs uh, basically when um you run a hook and you know the jobs that are running you need that output in standard out or standard error a way to capture that and then have tooling consume that and do something with it today it's just silent you know you either fail or succeed. So, or rather, rather, do, do, 
do you know if there's anything particular that's outstanding on the hit review or is it just um um so there, there was some wording around uh whether to write that output into standard out or standard error and we changed that to have all that output go to standard error like all other output that we have so that that's changed and um it's been addressed in the pr or in the hip review PR. <clears throat> yeah yeah i remember doing that close. output yeah sorry I, I can go take a look at this one again yeah thank you um yeah. All right, uh, we've got one minute to do assignments. Unless we have any shout outs or social media amplification uh, quickly. Um, I would have a shout out to Matt for, for putting together the Helm 4 process doc because that is going to be super important. Sorry, Matt, it was a very, very fast shout out, but <laughs> still yeah, appreciate it. Thanks. And, and for everybody, if you give feedback into that doc in the next week, I will turn it into a hip and then we can take it on from there. Uh, so the, the list that you have there of proposed changes is is that will that be the source of truth or because then no get... that I won't put that in the hip it'll be the process around it that'll go into the hip the actual things that are in scope or the things that we would go after we'll leave that to the side and not put it in there so we can debate it elsewhere we can just keep an internal personal running list for the project just to help us track it it doesn't need to go into a hip. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, we've got zero minutes left, so moderator. I'll volunteer. I haven't done it in a while. So, uh, notes. I can do notes. Issue triage. Yeah, I can. I'll do some as well. Uh, I'll set myself down for PR review. Anybody else for right. issue triage or PR review? I need PR reviews. Do them every day. Awesome. Actually, another shout out. I think you've done quite a few reviews, which has been great. Thank you, Robert. Um, all right. Uh, call maintainer. I will be here next week. Anybody else? Matt. Matt. Sorry, be here. Moderating. <laughs> uh, already. Uh, let us finish up since we're at time. Thank you all. Appreciate sure, the discussion. Thanks. Yeah.